Hey y'all, we are on page 49 today. We're gonna look at verifying uh, trigonometric identities. So pretty much what we're trying to do is we're trying to show that the identities are the exact same on both sides. So it's kind of what we were doing before, except sometimes they're not gonna simplify down to just like one trig function. Um, they might simplify to, to, to multiple things. But the nice thing is you know the answer. Like it tells you the answer from the get-go so you know what it needs to look like. So we're always gonna look to start with the more complicated side, right? Look to see which side's more complicated. And what I usually mean by that is what I'm looking for is things that include maybe like addition or subtraction, right? Those types of things are more complicated than multiplication. So the side that has addition or subtraction is usually where you want to start. Or you might look, <coughs> excuse me, you might look for the side that has the fractions on it, things like that. That's kind of what you're aiming for. Um, and I kind of listed a few options you might try here. Maybe look for opportunities to factor, add fractions together, square binomials, or create monomial denominators. In other words, look for ways that you could factor things. Look for ways that you can bring your fractions together. Um, ways that if you were to multiply or square a binomial on both sides, that you would create factor-like problems and go backwards. Or what this right here means is find ways to make the denominator into a single term. How could you change the denominators to put them together? Maybe those don't work and you move into looking at your fundamental identities. Think about your Pythagorean identities, especially. Anytime you see something squared, that would be a good thing to think about. And if all else fails, convert everything into sine and cosine, try and solve. But again, that is your, your last ditch effort. You don't want to do that unless you feel like there's no other option because you're going to find yourself stressed and overwhelmed if you do that. So going down to this first one. So the first thing I'm going to notice is that when I want to pick my side I want to solve, I definitely want to start by trying to solve this side because this side has subtraction in it, which tends to be more difficult. Um, multiplication is our simpler side. In other words, it's easier to turn subtraction into multiplication. It is much harder to turn multiplication back into subtraction. So you always want to start on the side that has the addition of subtraction in it. So taking a look at this first one here, secant minus cosine. We need to make it into sine uh, times tangent. So one of the first things I'm going to do is probably I'm going to recognize that secant and cosine go together as reciprocal identities, right? I know the identity of secant is that secant is equal to one over the cosine of theta. That S is really ugly. Minus the cosine of theta. Now I know that this technically represents the cosine of theta over one. So maybe I can put those together, right? That would be a good start, putting those together into a single fraction. So let's multiply this by cosine of theta, cosine of theta, to get them to be the same denominator. So now I have one over the cosine of theta minus the cosine squared of theta over the cosine of theta, which means that would come together to be one minus cosine squared theta over cosine theta. And now we're getting pretty close here. I recognize that one minus cosine squared, that represents one of our trig identities, right? I'm gonna bring this up here. We know that one minus cosine squared is the same thing as sine squared theta over cosine of theta. And since I've got two sines on top now, I could separate those out and make it sine of theta times sine of theta over cosine of theta. And look what we were trying to get it to be. I'm going to put my equal sign back here that I kind of dropped right at the beginning. But we're trying to make it equal sine of theta times tangent of theta. That's what we were trying to prove right up here. Well, you can see that I've got my sine of theta right here. And I know that if I were to take sine divided by cosine, that would give me tangent. So I can rewrite that as sine of theta times tangent of theta equals sine of theta times tangent of theta and now I've verified that they are the same as each other. So that is your goal, just trying to get them to be the same on both sides, using your properties to manipulate one side to make it equal the same as one, the other. Notice something, I never touched this side. You can only mess with one side. One side has to stay the same from the beginning to the end. You can't change both sides. One has to stay the same. So only manipulate one side. The other side has to remain the same. So if we come over here, the more complicated side is definitely the high, uh, the fraction. So I'm going to highlight this. This one is not going to change. That's the one that has to stay the same. I'm only going to manipulate the problem on the left side. So I need to get it to be secant over, or sorry, secant multiplied by the cosine. So let's think about some things that I might be able to manipulate here. Um, I definitely see in this bottom part 
that sine times cotangent. Let's see what we can manipulate that into right real quick. So cosine of theta is going to stay on top. On the bottom, I know that if I take sine and multiply it by cotangent, and I'm going to write this step out so you can see it, but some of you might have already picked up right away and you could make this quick change. We know that cotangent is cosine over sine. So if I multiply sine times cosine over sine, the sines are going to cancel out. And I'm left with a cosine on the bottom. So I have cosine of theta over cosine of theta. Now, you could quickly jump to just being like, oh, great, cosine over cosine of theta cancels and we get 1. <laughs> but you're not trying to prove it equals 1. That's not the goal. With that said, we should have recognized right off the bat that secant times cosine, those are reciprocals, right? They're reciprocals of each other. When you multiply two reciprocals, you always get 1. So I know that I'm on the right track. Here's another little rule that could help you. Anytime you take a trig function that's on the top or the bottom of the fraction, you can move it to the other side of the fraction and change it to its reciprocal. So for example, I could move this cosine straight to the top and make it a secant. To make that a little bit more clear, here's what I mean is happening. I'm going to take this cosine on top and leave it as cosine of theta. On the bottom, I'm going to rewrite that as its reciprocal, 1 over secant of theta. And then I'm going to use keep change flip. So keeping the top the same as cosine of theta. I'm going to technically make it cosine over 1, right? Change to multiplication and do the reciprocal of the bottom. The reciprocal of 1 over secant is secant over 1. And now I have cosine times secant over 1, which we could rewrite as secant times cosine, which equals secant times cosine, which again is what we we're trying to prove right here. This is the same thing as the highlighted one up top. So we have proved they're the same. We've done it. They're verified. So I guess a good takeaway from this, right? Don't just rush steps. You need to make sure you're constantly going back and looking at what we're doing. If you rush this, you might have just canceled this out and been like, oh, it's one. And you'd be like, oh, wait, that doesn't help, right? You're here at the right spot. Make sure you reference this and say, what am I trying to get to? How can I, how can I, like, I already know I have this cosine and this cosine. How can I turn this cosine into this secant, which is why I made this change right here? Be very mindful of what you're trying to get to so you don't rush steps and then make mistakes. All right, this one, the easy step, right? The one that's the most simplified is definitely this one. So let's not change tangent. We just need to get everything on the left to equal tangent on the right. So the first thing I might do here is I definitely would probably distribute. Like, let's just get some stuff distributed and see what happens. So the secant distributes in here and here. I know if I multiply secant and cosecant together, nothing changes, right? Secant of theta times cosecant of theta stays the same. But on that other side, if I multiply secant by cosine because they're reciprocals, those are just going to multiply and give me 1. Secant times cosine is 1, meaning all that's left there is that cotangent of theta. So the really right away, that's going to help us out a lot in just getting that out of there. Um, and I think we're at a situation now that we probably need to just convert everything into their, their identities in terms of sine and cosine, right? Secant would become 1 over cosine, and cosecant becomes 1 over sine. And then we know cotangent is cosine over sine. So if I'm going to add these fractions together, this first fraction goes together easy because it's multiplication, right? 1 and then cosine times sine, right? 1 times 1 is 1, and then cosine times sine is cosine sine. This one right here is not going to have the same denominator, right? This, this fraction here doesn't have the same denominator. But if I multiply the denominator by cosine, then I have to multiply the numerator by that. And that is going to give us the same. Sine times cosine is the exact same denominator. Cosine theta, sine theta. I switched it around, but that's OK. The numerator, cosine times cosine, becomes cosine squared of theta. And now I can put that all together. The top becomes 1 minus cosine squared of theta. And in that denominator, I've got cosine theta times sine of theta. Well, 1 minus cosine squared is definitely an identity. That's sine squared of theta over cosine times sine. And that means I can cancel out one of these signs, right? This sign can cancel with one of these signs on top. And now I have a single sign left on top divided by this cosine. And sine over cosine is tangent of theta, which is equal to tangent of theta that we had started with. Tangent of theta matches the tangent of theta we're trying to get to. So we are done. All right, over here, 
we're trying to manipulate cosine, cosecant minus sine into cosine cotangent. Again, the right side here is definitely the most simple one. It's not always the right side. In this, in this first four problems, it coincidentally has always been the right side. Sometimes the left side will stay though, so don't, don't just assume it's the right side. Again, I like to keep the multiplication side. I wanna manipulate the addition side. That's a little bit easier to manipulate. And you can see in this one, we've got cosecant minus sine. The first thing that pops up to me is, hey, those are reciprocals. So I'm gonna rewrite cosecant as one minus sine of theta minus sine of theta over one, right? We can rewrite this, this little sine of theta as sine of theta over one. And the reason I wanna do that is now I can multiply to get the same denominator. The first one has a denominator of sine, so I'm gonna multiply the top and the bottom of the second fraction by sine. And now I can end up with one over sine minus sine squared over sine. And those can go together to make one fraction. One minus sine squared ends up on top. And since the bottom has the same denominator, it just stays the denominator sine of theta. So one minus sine squared theta over sine of theta. Instantly, I know that one minus sine squared is the same thing as cosine squared of theta. And we're really close now. Let me bring this up here. We could separate that cosine of theta into two cosine of thetas, right? You don't have to leave it as cosine squared. You can rewrite it as cosine times cosine over sine, and again, uh, this almost looks exactly like the first example. This cosine that we wanted, we have that right here. We can see that this last part right here, this cotangent comes from these two. If you take cosine divided by sine, you're gonna get cotangent. So the first cosine stays, that cosine over sine becomes cotangent of theta, and that equals cosine times cotangent, check. Again, I'm gonna make this highlight here so we can see that that's what we're trying to equal, and we are good. Notice that last step, I always do that same thing. I write that equals and show that this comes down and it's the same. I'm always bringing this down here to show that I have the two things exactly the same at the end. So make sure you bring that last step down. All right, the fifth example. Ooh, this one's kind of tricky because I got two things that definitely could be the situation where I have addition or subtraction, right? I've got addition and subtraction on the left and addition and subtraction on the right. Definitely in this case though, again, I wanna keep the right side. The right side's gonna be what I wanna stay. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because the left side has not only addition and subtraction, but it also has fractions. So I wanna manipulate that left side as much as I can to make it equal the right side. All right, so taking a look here, I probably wanna go fraction by fraction to start this out, to make this secant squared minus tangent squared thing happen. Now, actually, something I do notice here, right? Secant squared and tangent squared, that does show up somewhere in our identities, right? I'm gonna write this over here as just an aside. This isn't me solving the problem yet. But I do know that one plus tangent squared equals secant squared. That's one of my Pythagorean identities. Meaning if I were to subtract the tangent squared, secant squared minus tangent squared is equal to one. So I know that if I can make the left side equal one, I can use that identity, which I think is way easier than trying to manipulate it to get to equal secant squared tangent squared. If secant squared minus tangent squared is equal to one, if I can get the left side equal one, I can apply that identity. So that's my goal then. How can I make the left side equal one? Really simple. Go one fraction at a time. We're gonna work, focus on a single fraction at a time, okay? Um, actually, before I do that, that's not gonna that's not gonna do that that way. Let's not do that. I lied. You don't even know what I was thinking, but I'm not gonna do what I was gonna do. Here's what I think we're gonna want to do here. We want to get these fractions together, right? I've got cosecant and secant. Uh, Whoa, that was weird. I've got cosecant and secant. So I need to bring those fractions together, which means I need to multiply them by their opposites um, reciprocal, right? I need to make them have the same denominator. So this first one, sine of theta over cosecant of theta, to make it the same, let me just actually write this whole thing out. Okay, I need to multiply it so they have the same denominator, which means I need to bring the secant over here. So secant to the top and the bottom. Likewise, I need to bring this cosecant over here and multiply it to the top and the bottom. Um, the reason being is I need them to be the same denominator, right? So by doing that, now they have the denominator secant of theta times cosecant of theta. And my numerators can come together. Secant of theta times sine of theta plus cosine of theta times cosecant of theta. 
And now I can maybe manipulate some of this stuff here and make it come together. Let me think on this for a sec. No, you know what? This is dumb. This is silly. Again, let's talk about what's happening here, right? I've got a huge mess. I've got a huge mess. Don't worry about writing anymore. I'm going to erase it. You can start erasing if you want to right now if you've already wrote it. What I know is this secant is the same thing as 1 over cosine, which means sine times 1 over cosine isn't going to help. We're going to end up with tangent, right? Sine over cosine, which is tangent. And that's going to add more trig functions here. Same thing over here. This becomes 1 over sine. And, and cosine times sine is, or cosine times 1 over sine is going to be cotangent. Again, we're getting really messy really fast. We're going to have way too many trig functions. So let's back up. Again, this is very normal in this process. It is okay to do this. I think what's way easier is, is the fact that, that right off the bat, and I should have I should have noticed this, sine and cosecant are, are reciprocals, right? So focus on that one fraction like I originally said. Sine, that was weird, sine of theta over, and this denominator would become one over sine of theta, which means if I do keep change flip, I'm gonna keep sine the same, and multiply by that reciprocal, which is sine over one or just sine. So it becomes sine of theta times sine of theta over one, which is sine squared of theta, okay? Come over to this other one here. Just kind of work it out on the side now. The plus, and I had cosine of theta, and since secant is one over cosine, come on, go away, there we go. One over cosine of theta, again, keep change flip. So I've still got this plus sign here. Keep the cosine on the top. Do the reciprocal of 1 over cosine, which is cosine over 1. And I get cosine squared of theta. And what is sine squared plus cosine squared? Well, we know that equals 1. Equals 1. And 1 is equal to secant squared of theta minus tangent squared of theta. So we now know secant squared um, minus tangent squared is equal to secant squared minus tangent squared. Sorry, it's getting really small there, meaning this matches now, and we have proven it. So again, be comfortable erasing and starting over. That is more than okay. It happens. All right, coming over here, we've got sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x divided by tangent of x equals cotangent of x. Oh, wow. This one, this one's EZ. Cotangent of x, done. That's definitely the simplest side. We're going to start there and keep that the same. Well, if you look over there, sine squared plus cosine squared over tangent, tangent of x, immediately you should recognize sine squared plus cosine squared is always equal to 1. I can rewrite this whole thing as 1 over tangent of x because this whole thing equals 1. And 1 over tangent is cotangent of x, which is equal to cotangent of x. Check, 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 done. Very easy for that one. All right, going on to the back side here, we got four more questions, or sorry, three more questions to try. Here I've got the secant of theta plus one times the cosecant of theta minus cotangent of theta equals tangent of theta. So definitely the one I want to keep is the tangent of theta. I'm going to manipulate this left side a little bit. So the first thing I might try to do is I might try to see what I could bring together and what I combine together. So for example, the secant of theta plus one, um, I might not stress too much about that right off the bat. Because I think, let me think on this for a second. Hmm. <laughs> I, I think there's definitely a couple ways you could do this. I might try foiling this together, right? That might be a good strategy. You could foil that together, and I don't see things that cancel right away, but I definitely, as I'm thinking ahead, there are definitely things that would cancel. So that is definitely a way you could do it. I'm going to try to simplify this second one first, right? I'm going to start with that. Let's see if we could simplify the second one a little bit first. So 1 over sine minus cosine over sine. So the reason I, I wanted to do that is I knew they both would have the same denominator, which means I could rewrite that a little bit simpler. I could rewrite that a little bit nicer as secant of theta plus 1. And then that can come together as 1 minus cosine of theta over sine of theta. So that's looking a little bit nicer on that side. 
Um, on the left side, maybe we could even try to rewrite that as one fraction. And then we just have a fraction times a fraction. So let's see what would happen here. If I rewrite secant as 1 over cosine and rewrite cosine as cosine over cosine. Sorry, rewrite 1 as cosine over cosine. Now that could come together. I'm just going to bring this straight down. And this could be rewritten as 1 plus cosine of theta over cosine of theta. And this one was 1 minus cosine theta over sine of theta. And there is something I recognize. Now we can multiply them together. Right now that I've got a fraction of fraction, you can just multiply those fractions. And those numerators are something nice. That numerator is 1 plus cosine and 1 minus cosine. That's a difference of two squares. So when I multiply 1 plus cosine by 1 minus cosine, I know that I'm going to get 1 minus cosine squared of theta. And then the denominator is cosine of theta times sine of theta. Well, 1 minus cosine squared is the same thing as sine squared of theta. And now I can do my canceling. I can cancel this sine with one sine here. And I have sine of theta over cosine of theta, which equals tangent of theta, which equals the tangent of theta from the beginning that we wanted this to equal to from up there. And there we are. So again, the other way I talked about, if you started by foiling that together, you might have got the same answer too. Uh, not even might. You probably would have. I, like, I'm probably like 80% certain you would have got there too. Lots of ways you can get there, but I think that definitely was the way that stood out to me as the best option. All right, over here we've got tangent of theta plus cotangent of theta equals secant theta times cosecant. So like we said before, always keep the multiplication. Again, I noticed this whole entire practice set, even the last one, all had us keep the right side. That's not always the case, and I wish I would have recognized that before and fixed some of them. Sometimes you keep the left side. Don't always try to keep the right side. Sometimes you'll keep the left. All right, so here, cotangent plus, or tangent plus cotangent. The only thing that I know I can do here is I could definitely 100% rewrite this as uh, cosines and sines, right? I could rewrite this as sine of theta over cosine of theta plus cosine of theta over sine of theta. And we could do our little multiplication trick, right? Multiply our sine over here. Multiply our cosine over here. And that's going to get us that denominator to be the same. So the top becomes sine times sine is sine squared. And here I've got sine times cosine. Over on the other side, cosine times cosine is cosine squared. And that bottom sine times cosine. So now they have the same denominator, we can actually put them together. So top becomes sine squared plus cosine squared. This bottom is sine of theta plus cosine, nope, sorry, times cosine of theta. And now when I do this multiplication, or sorry, when I do this identity, sine squared plus cosine squared, we know that's one. So one over sine of theta times cosine of theta. And you could rewrite that as two separate fractions. You don't have to leave it. You can always separate the multiplications on the bottom. You can't separate addition and subtraction, right? If this is one over sine plus cosine, you can't separate it. But if it's multiplication, you can rewrite this as one sine of theta multiplied by one cosine of theta. Because we know if you multiply one and one together, you get one. And if you multiply sine and cosine together, you get sine cosine. Those represent the reciprocals. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant of theta. The reciprocal of cosine is secant of theta, and that equals the cosecant secant we were trying to get at the beginning. Boop. All right, on to our last one here. We can see very clearly 2 tangent of theta is the simplest one, so I want to leave it as 2 tangent of theta, and I want to manipulate that left one to make it that. In this case, I definitely see uh, another similar problem to what we just did. I've got denominators that aren't the same, but they are differences of two squares. I immediately see that one minus sine and one plus sine. That is a pattern you're looking for. If you see one minus and one plus any trig function, you should recognize that as probably a difference of two squares, which might make one of our Pythagorean identities. So I'm going to do the step where we multiply this over here and multiply this over here. So this cosine of theta over one minus sine of theta, I'm going to multiply that by one plus sine, one plus sine. And then here we had the minus, and this one was the cosine of theta over the 1 plus sine of theta. I'm going to bring the 1 minus over here and multiply by 1 minus sine, 1 minus sine. So 
when I go to do this, we know that for the top part, we're gonna have to do some distributing. Let's just put it together. Like we, we don't have to write this all out. We know what's gonna happen. Let's just do it and not stress ourselves out. This denominator becomes one plus sine, one minus sine, right? I'm just gonna rewrite them as one fraction right now. So we know there's a subtraction in the middle. What I know is this first one, we're gonna need to distribute this here, right? Technically, this is in parentheses. So this cosine has to multiply to the one and to the sine. So in parentheses here, cosine times one is, make this bottom fraction line a little bit longer. Okay, this first one, cosine times one is cosine of theta. And then cosine times sine, it's gonna be plus sine cosine. Next, I'm gonna have over here, same thing, we're gonna to have to multiply that cosine to both things, so cosine times one and cosine times sine. So we're gonna have cosine times one is cosine theta, minus, and then sine times cosine is sine cosine. So a couple things that are gonna simplify here for us. The first thing is we're gonna to have to distribute this negative on top. So the first one, we could drop the parentheses, it becomes cosine of theta plus sine cosine, but then when I distribute that negative, it becomes minus cosine theta, and then minus times minus is plus sine cosine. In that bottom part, when I multiply one plus sine times one minus sine, I'm gonna end up with one minus sine squared of theta. So for this top part, the cosines get to cancel out, meaning there's just a sine cosine plus sine cosine. So the numerator becomes two sine I'm dropping my variable, I'm sorry. Two sine of theta, cosine of theta. And that denominator, one minus sine squared, we know that becomes cosine squared theta. Which means I can cancel this cosine with one cosine on the bottom, and I am left with two sine of theta on top over one cosine of theta on the bottom, and look at that, sine divided by cosine. The two stays, but sine over cosine, that becomes, let me circle that better. There you go. That sine divided by cosine becomes tangent of theta. And now I have two tangent of theta, which is what I was trying to equal. So highlight and done. All right, hopefully that helps out. I know that was a lot of